All right, guys, um, branding on the edge of the abyss. I am not going to take a technology approach on this talk uh, simply because branding uses technology as a consequence or as a support tool or as a, uh, a strategic sort of enhancer to create a, um, a good brand. So we'll then talk a little bit about what brand is, how we can use it, and what we should do about the situation we're in today. Um, a little bit about me. I am. My name is Robert Linus Krogh. I am. Uh, well, I am Dutch Italian. Out of all possible things, I live in Norway, um, and I'm an advisor for like global uh, global brands. And uh, I do it basically well out of this country, but mostly in um, in Europe. Also, um, my current focus is on startups. I run a company that has ten ventures inside the company, and uh, we apply the brand methodology I'm talking about today also in these. But then not enough about me. Um, I'm going to try and round this up in about 18, 19 minutes. We get a bit of time for Q&A, but please feel free to just shoot your questions to Andreas or um, just to me uh, once you see it. So let's roll it back because I really want to get everybody on board what brand actually is and what it means because there are so many different ways that people define what brand actually means. So let's get that going. And before I start... I just want you to look at this guy. You, I, and I'm not going to ask you to answer this now, but I want you to know, I want you to know if you've seen him before, if you know who this is, and if you don't know who it is, what do you think he's doing? All right? Let's just, you know, have a quick talk about that or have a quick think about that. Now, let's go back to that magic word, brand. Um, there's a lot of people will tell you, oh, brand, you know, that's our logo. And it must be our logo because that's what everybody recognizes. But unfortunately, it's not. Simply because it's not enough. And then people will tell you that it must be design. Specifically, design agencies would like to tell you that branding is all about design. It's a part of it, but it's not a brand. But then in the end, you'll get this one thing, and we're talking retail. It must be the product. But as you can probably imagine by now, it's not. Then we can turn it around and say it must be communication. It must be what we say, what we do, and how we pronounce it. But it's not that either. And of course, it is also not a great tagline. And very actual these days, it is the person, the one guy that is the ambassador for the brand. But it's not the brand either. But then HR comes in and will tell you it is the people. It's everybody that works for this company that has this great brand. But it's not that either. So we can go back and say, hmm, what is it? But what, 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 are we, what are we supposed to do? What, what is it we're trying to work with here? And brand really is about these guys. It's about what's in their heads. It's what's in their minds. It's what's in their heart. And it's what's in their stomach. And it sounds very philosophical, but a brand is really the sum of the personal values, experiences, interpretations, associations, feelings you have with the company service or product. Because... In the end, that's what defines a brand. If you like Nike, it's because you have an experience around it or you've been introduced to it by a certain person and then you made up your own mind what that brand means to you. And then marketing amplifies or enables that thought, but it's not what defines it. You are the one that defines it because brands are created by people for people and they're based on human psychology. So it's the way we think about things that makes the brand stand out and be able to position themselves. So, and if we put that in a bigger perspective, Jeff Bezos, you know, who we all know by now, he's running the most valuable company on the planet, which is called Amazon. You become a brand when people talk about your stuff when you're not in the room. Not in the room. That's a great thing because people start talking about you and they will associate things with you. And that means you've become a brand. But there's a problem with it because you're not in the room. Right. So when you're not in the room, you can't control the message. And when you're not controlling the message, you don't know what people are saying. So branding should help you define that message. So when people talk about you when you're not in the room, you're actually saying, they are actually saying what you want them to say. Right. And in a typical live session, I'll illustrate it like this. And most people know IKEA. Right? It has a certain meaning. If you, are a, if you are a lawyer watching or a consultant, you'll probably, and I, thought, I would ask you, hey, what do you associate with IKEA? You probably say, hmm, it's a really good business model. It's fast, it's Scandinavian, it's clean, I like it. Right? 
And then if I ask sort of a 22-year-old student, he will say, easy, but really annoying. Right? And then maybe me, he would say, my, you know, we live really close to Ikea. Here's what my wife figures out. Ooh, I need candles. Well, I got to go to Ikea. Right? So it's that Saturday night quick activity. That's Ikea for me. So it, it's, there's, there's very different views. And when the guy who created Ikea said, we want to make furniture for the many people, it is something that he wanted everybody to understand. We can turn this one page further and we look at this one, which is a brand that, well, I think one of the last research said about 89% of people in the world know this brand. Um, it is very old and it's also extremely commercial, but it has a great, interesting history. But the funny thing is that this brand is only cool when it's not in your own city. If it's in your own city, you probably don't go there. But the moment you start traveling, it's a cool place to have been. And you can get proof that you've been somewhere. And that T-shirt, still today, is the most sold T-shirt in the world. And out of the 155 cafes, there is 140 that won't survive without T-shirt sales. That's what that brand does to you. Do it a bit more in a new, in a new age. Look at Uber. Right? A brand that is very well known as a technology platform used to be the most valuable privately held company in the world. Um, they have This is a brand that has caused riots. If you remember Paris two years ago with, with, with cars being set on fire, overturned London demonstrations. But at the same time, for us as the normal consumer, it's a fantastic company because we can go anywhere we want in the world and we can use this app to get our rides. Very good. And then, of course, we can't, have, we can't talk about brands when we don't talk about this. But Tesla became, again, the most valuable car company in the world. They've been doing this for 11 years, which is also makes it one of the youngest car companies in the world. And they actually can't build cars. They are a software company that accidentally puts things on wheels. Um, their valuation, their stock, or their share price there went, went up crazy the last couple of days. Again, it's over $1,000 a share. And also, what it does, this company, and again, I want to go back to making you understand how you can become a brand that keeps surprising and keeps owning that message. I'm not sure how many of you have seen the presentation of this Cybertruck, as it's called, but we, with the ones of you that have seen it, even some of you that haven't seen it, will know that the presentation of the bulletproof glass didn't really work, right? They actually threw a stone into the glass and it broke, it shattered. But instead of making this a PR disaster, 27 minutes after the PR event stopped, Tesla started selling these t-shirts on their website, which is the exact picture of the broken glass. That's when you own a message and that's when you're a different type of car company. So the clear idea is, and this is really important, is that when you go forward now, is that a brand is really not what you say it is. It's what they say it is. And they is everyone else. Because I can say whatever I want about my company. If you don't believe it, you won't reiterate that message. If, you're not, if you don't like Ikea, if you have a bad customer experience, if your customer journey is bad, you will tell other people that that customer journey is bad. If the digital experience within your retail environment is bad. If you're if you haven't if you are not focusing on the right things and the right audience, they will not lift your brand. They will not enable it. They will break it down. And that means that they are telling their audience what your brand is all about. So it's about controlling that message. Now let's go back to this guy. Um, I'm not sure if you now by now know who it is, um, but I will tell you a little bit about what your brain has done in the last 20 minutes or in the last now not 20 minutes sorry 12 minutes. You've been thinking about it. And you've been trying to put him into a little box because you think, oh, I should know him. Maybe I know him. He must be an actor or he must be a Formula One driver. Uh, female audiences usually post put him as a Formula One driver or a model. Uh, male audiences usually want him to be a banker. Um, however, we don't know. We assume because we've seen a guy like that before. And because of that, we think it's that. Right? We put it in this little compartment that, that fits that person. That is the exact same thing that we do when we are exposed to a new brand, because we try to understand it and we put it somewhere we've, which we can associate with and which we've seen before. But it may be completely wrong because we don't know what that brand is all about. So we automatically start assuming. Let me just quickly change this man to this man. And there's no doubt, you know who this is, right? 
Um, here, well, you know, we know what it's all about. We know what it says. We know what it doesn't say. You might agree or disagree with him, or like him, or dislike him. It doesn't matter. You know who this is, what he stands for, and what it's all about. Why? Because we know the inside. We know something about the strategy, purpose, some of the emotion, definitions, the sense of belonging. We understand what it's all about. And it's the same thing because brands talk to us as people and our psychology. The way our brain works is that we look at everything from a human perspective. So a shoe that we like is based on the way we emotionally associate with that shoe. It's as simple as that. And why? It's because today you cannot sell anything, anything without one very specific element, and it's called credibility. If you're not credible, if you can deliver that to your customer as a retailer, car manufacturer, consultancy, IT company, whatever you are, that is what you need because if you don't have that, people will not buy from you. And that is one, maybe the number one thing because credibility is one of the most sought after associations of any brand in the world right now. And it's very easy to track. Right? Because it's easy to figure out if people are lying to you. Now, if you look at this slide, just to give you a quick difference between communication and marketing and brand management. If you are on the well, right side of your screen, this looks quite okay. It's a nice apartment area. You know, and uh, you, can, uh, you can walk around and it's, it's nice and pretty clean and it's okay. But if you were to buy an apartment there and you were start using it, you may be quite disappointed once you start moving in. Because obviously, there's nothing there. It's just a facade. That's what marketing does. We can tell any story we want, right? Because marketing is, is easy. It's, I mean, it's not easy, but it is very sort of, it's storytelling. And we can tell any story we want. But if we overpromise and underdeliver, markets today, 2020, will not accept it. Quick example, probably seen her before. Her name is Elizabeth Holmes. Uh, she built a company called Theranos. It was valued at, uh, I think, $2 billion in the end with 1,000 employees. They had absolutely nothing. And it was worth nothing. But she's been going on for years, right? So that's, that's, that's a clever way of building something that is nothing. Let me just take that to the other side of the story, which is the inside of your organization. Because you might think that, ah, we're okay, we're not entirely, entirely sure about the platform and our brand and how, but, you know, our, our customers will understand. No, they don't. Because they have no idea. And they don't care, right? They, they need that clarity. And your employees need that clarity. Let me shock you a little bit. In Europe, there's just been a research done by McKinsey, 75% of employees have no idea what their company brand is all about. Out of 100 people, that is 75 people that really don't know. That's scary, right? So that needs to be worked with. So let's go back to how to work with that, right? We talked about branding in the edge of the abyss. There's a line that is probably a resemblance of where many companies sort of revenue sheet and, and, and prognosis at the moment. And we are, why? Because we are in the middle of a black swan event. We and I have not expected this. We weren't ready. We weren't prepared. We're overreacting, underreacting, managing well, managing badly. I'm in Norway. It looks pretty good right now. I have clients in the US. It doesn't look good at all. Uh, so it, it's, it, it, it's a personal perspective. Then you have other people in, in different areas where this seems okay, but then there's a state somewhere else. It's, it's crazy. So we just came out of a lockdown, um, which lasts for two months, which essentially stopped everything. But what is possible then? Because if we turn this around, we know, and this is extremely right for retail, we know that we have to change. We have to turn things around. And maybe we have to turn things around 180 degrees. So we can flip that curve from going down to going up. Doing business as usual will not come back. Right? The, the industry will not come back in the same way it did. Right? The stock market isn't reacting as everyone else at the moment. For whatever reason, there's a lot of belief in the future. Great. But if we don't change, if we don't create the right customer journeys, if we don't create the right brands that people believe in, we will not be able to sell and we won't be able to turn it around. And there's one specific aspect, which I think is very, very, very important. How do you make decisions? You make decisions 99% of the time based on your emotion, 
the limbic part of your brain, that little thing that controls decision-making, and it's based on emotions. And companies and products alone don't influence that. However, we have this little tool called brands, and they do, because they can help us make those emotional decisions if they are worked with strategically. So the idea is, what is it we want? What do we want? We want, of course, we want a great life and everything, but as a business, what do we want? Well, we probably want more people to buy more of our stuff for a longer period of time at a higher price. And here's the trick. We wanted them to do it over a longer period of time. So that means we can't just stop communicating. We can't stop working with our brand. We can't stop running a strategic effort to make sure that people understand what our position is because we want them to come back and we want new ones to come to us. And we want them to pay more and accept that, right? Because that's what brand can do. It gives you the excuse for yourself as a customer and for you as a, as a supplier to charge higher prices. And people are willing to pay it, right? And then take it one step further. A lot of our customers say, oh, we have to serve everyone. Do you? Really? Do you know who you're serving? Do you know your number one audience that is taking that digital journey into your arena and how they maybe go into a physical arena after that? Are those the ones you're actually trying to reach? Or are you just trying to reach everyone and actually by doing that reach no one? This is a time to really be specific, to build your experiences and your customer experiences and your brand experience based on that core audience, the one that you really want to sell to. If you don't really know, if you should ask your people that are in sales, who are our core customers? They should tell you like this. They can't do that? Let's try and find out. Do the research. Because that's when you will sell. That's your number one sales game. It's trying to figure out who you're actually selling to and what are these guys expecting from you in your customer journey. So, and then we're almost at the end here. But, you know, speak, don't shout. Everybody, I don't know about you guys, but I've been receiving about four and a half thousand Corona, we're here for you emails. It's not relevant. Right? I love this tweet from like Laura, who's uh, living somewhere on the West Coast in Australia. She's like, hey, it's good to know that one coffee shop I went to Sydney once to steal their Wi-Fi is open for business as usual. Lovely. It's great. doesn't matter. I don't care. Right? And all of these sort of branded messages that don't mean anything, don't mean anything. It doesn't, it doesn't drive sales. It goes and gets people annoyed. The only thing that sort of works is when you actually take a position. And I'd like to show you just a quick video about a company that took a position, if you maybe haven't seen it. series made by ESPN about Michael Jordan, number 23. And you'd say, oh, yeah, but that's a, a series and what does that have to do with retail? Well, what does that have to do with retail is that there's an amazing amount of increase in Jordan-related sales. The actual, I'm just looking at numbers here now, the year on year Air Jordan sales are up by 63% worldwide. The audiences that are looking for 23, the number, have been increased by 4,000%. And there's all things basketball are booming. There is hoops and balls and everything is flying off the shelves right now. So what the point is, I'm not saying you have to make a series and put it in your spend on Netflix and then spend millions of dollars for an artist that's been there 40 years ago. But it's all about that emotional aspect. It's about putting that emotion back into your company because I can tell you that is the one thing that makes people buy stuff. And there's another part of it, which is where you put your money. Right for advertising, marketing, all that stuff. You've seen what happened to our friends at social media. We have our Facebooks and our Googles and our Twitters and our, our Snapchats and our Instagrams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
now, you'll see that Facebook is taking a different route. All while Twitter, Snapchat are really, really taking a stand um, and on an ethical way, Facebook is really looking to be the number one money machine. Right? It's shareholder value. There's no ethics in that company right now. So right now you see all the other social media channels taking a stand all while Facebook doesn't do that. So the question is, as a retailer, as a, a, a company that is going to market and to talk to a new audience, where are you going to put your money? Are you going to just put your money where everybody is right now? And are you going to just unconsciously use the Googles and the Facebooks? Or are you going to actually make conscious choices and maybe take a stand because of that? Right? It's just something to you know have in the back of your head. And then, of course, what are we entering now? We're entering the age of consolidation. There will be more companies around that will consolidate with others. There will be partnerships. There will be new different, different types and different markets. And once markets go, when that happens and there's takeovers and everything, we will end up in a very fragmented marketplace. That's when you want to have a clear brand. Why? Because our brains are hardwired to see something that is not normal, different. And I have a story about a purple cow and Seth Godin, but I'm seeing him running out of time, so I'm not going to do this. But that little purple dot is what makes us tick. That's how, how our brains are working. We believe in what we do, and we want to be unique. And we really want to be unique on that world map. What we don't really understand is that there will be many, many others that are just as unique as we are. And they may be our neighbors. But it's really important that you do the best you can do to create that brand and to be as clear as you can with the resources that are available to you. Because right now, all eyes are on you. And everything, everyone is under attack. It doesn't matter what you do. If you're a one-person startup or a 5,000-people company, you will be under attack. Someone somewhere in a garage is trying to put you out of business, and that will happen. Right? So be aware. You can do one thing, two things. Sorry, I'm rounding up. You can do nothing. Oh, yeah. It's good. Ah, it's all right. You know, revenues are fine. We didn't have that much decline in COVID-19. It's all right. We're okay. Right? You just play that and hope things will blow over. Or you can turn this around and you can go in attack mode and really clarify your brand and make sure that people understand it. And with that, it's going to be okay, says Bruce. Thank you very much. <laughs>